Hi guys and gals, Al Smith here. In this late lesson, we're going to talk about opening a minor suit in the third and fourth seat. This is different than what we discussed in the last lesson of opening a minor suit in the first and second seat. Several things to be considered. One, your partner has already passed. And in third seat, you're going to want to obstruct the opponents if at all possible. And fourth seat, you're going to be the decider to determine whether the auction is going to get passed out or that you think you can control the auction and, and have the, the, the contract bid. So let's go get started. The third and fourth suit, seat, minor suit open. The bidding system is still designed so that in priority order, your goal is to first find a major suit bid contract, not a minor suit, but a major suit. The second is to find a no trump contract. And the third and last resort is to find a minor suit bid contract. The reason for this is that the easiest game typically to make is a major suit contract if you've got some distribution. The second is a no contract contract and the last is a minor suit contract because you have to take 11 tricks a lot of tricks okay all the first and second seat criteria also apply to the third and fourth seat okay so go back and make sure you understand the criteria for the first and second seat okay we're using standard american a minor suit open remember only promises three plus cards all right so and that the two, three, four method, the result, if it's greater than equal one, says yes, it's safe to open. So we don't want to open any hand where the two, three, four result is less than one. Okay, it's just going to be a really crappy hand. Well, there is one exception, the psychic. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay, we want it to meet the rule of 22. Okay, we want it to have two quick tricks. And we want the adjusted high card points plus the cards in the two longest suits to be greater than equal to 20. And as we discussed last week, there'll be exceptions hand where you've got four hearts and four spades and four hearts, four spades and three hearts, and three spades and four hearts. And there actually is an extension of this in the third seat and a contraction in the fourth seat. So we're going to look at these in detail, but this is the, the, the basic. Uh, that we're going to use. And we're going to open one diamond with five clubs and four diamonds with four high card points. That's the same thing. And also the one club with five spades and four and five clubs. These are the basic approaches of the third, first and second seat that we're going to use and build on in the third and then the fourth seat. All right, so let's look at the normal environment as it relates to the third seat minor open. Remember the partner's already passed. Well, what's that mean? It means your partner couldn't preempt and your partner couldn't open. So they probably have less than 12 high card points or 12 length points. Okay, what are the goals in third seat? Well, you want to create the foundation for the rest of the bidding system and for the defense. Okay, you want to tell your partner that you have something to encourage him or her to bid. Now, you want to do this even with a slightly weaker hand because you want to get in the face of that fourth seat opponent and try to find something that a fit with your partner so that you guys can compete. The next is, you know, with because we're using the rule of 22s, we want to guarantee a minimum offensive and defensive strength if we're opening one club or one diamond in the third or fourth seat or some other special characteristic. All right, so now, one of the things we haven't discussed before in first or second seat, because we're on the offensive there, is we've got to also take up a look at this from a defensive standpoint and say, we need to be able to control the auction. We don't want to open the hand with a crappy, uh, with a crappy one diamond or one club open with a very marginal hand and force the fourth seat opponent to, to bid to enter the auction with what they think is a really marginal hand. 
Okay, so we only want to open in third or fourth seat where we think we have a competitive advantage of controlling the auction. That's really important because we want to control the auction. Now, we also want to make sure that two, three, four result is greater than two, one, like we talked, the rule of 22. We're going to have this applied also. Okay, now, in addition to the rule of 22 for third seat, to help us determine if we can control the auction, we also want our hand to meet the rule of 15. And the rule of 15 is two quick tricks, plus the adjusted high card points. Remember, adjusted, make sure you're subtracting for those unguarded honors, and plus the number of spades greater than equal to 15. What this does is give you a quantitative capability of evaluating whether you have enough points or control of the master suit to be able to control the auction. This is a really important factor, being able to control the auction. Now, if you can do all three of these, two, three, four, result greater than equal to one, meet the rule of 22, and meet the rule of 15, you definitely want to open the hand, okay? That's a no-brainer, all right? Now, Let's take a look at two examples here. Okay, in the first example here, we have, uh, let's look at this, we've got, let's look at it from the standpoint, two, three, four, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight loops, so seven minus eight, the vulnerability factor, because we're vulnerable and they're not, is two, is equal to one. Hey, our hand, based upon two, three, four, is just strong enough be able to open. Now let's see if we can open using the other criteria. Having a yes answer to one of the questions is not enough. Okay, high card points. Well, we've got four, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13 high card points. Now it's kind of where we should track one or two is kind of questionable. And you know, I got the queen jack like that and it's guarded. I go, well, I'll, I'll still count it. But to be totally correct, it, probably should be subtracted, but we'll just say 13 minus one is equal to 12, 12 adjusted high card points. Now let's look at this from the standpoint of the rule of 20. Okay, yes, I like to err on the side of being a little bit more aggressive too in certain situations. Okay, we've got 12 plus five diamonds, three spades, that gives us a total of 20. So yay, we meet the rule of 20. Okay, and with the rule of, uh, uh, 15, where we got? We got 12 plus 3 is equal to 15. Okay, oh, I forgot to put in here, did we have the two quick tricks? Yay, barely we do. We've got two quick tricks. So we satisfy all the criteria. So we definitely want to open this hand we want diamond. Okay, now let's look at example number two. In this example, uh, we have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven losers. Okay. Uh, it says uh, two, three, four says well, it's safe to open two level. Hey, this two is better than one, right? All right. Let's see what we've got in terms of high card points. We've got 12 in this situation. Four, eight, 10, 11, 12. They're all guarded. So we still have 12. Hey, we've got the same number of high card points, adjusted high card points we had in example one. Hey, we're ahead of the game. Let's look at the rule of 20. Okay, we've got 12 plus 5 plus 4 is equal to 21. Hey, that's, that's better than this first hand again. So we've got 2 versus 1, 12 equals 12, equals 12 the same. We've got 21 versus 20. Yes, we're going to open this hand, right? Let's look at the rule of 15. We've got 12 plus 1 equals 13. We're not going to open this hand. We do not have any control of the spade suit. And we don't want to encourage that fourth seat opener who's probably sitting there with five spades to bid one spade if he's got a marginal hand. So what are we going to do? We're going to pass this hand. We're not going to open one spade. All right. So that's an example how you apply all of these criteria together. Okay. So. Let's take a look at the third seat, rule of 22 and rule of 15 exception. Now, we just went through two examples of the criteria using those two rules. And now we want to look at, are there any exceptions to this? Yeah, 
Okay, we're going to open one club of one diamond with a probable major suit fit. Remember, the first thing is to find a major suit fit. That's what the whole bidding system is about. So if we think that we have a high probability of having a major suit fit, we're going to want to open one club or one diamond. We want to be a little bit more aggressive. Okay, this actually, the exceptions are preemptive in nature and aggressive. Okay, especially in third C. Now in third C, we're going to get even more aggressive than in first and second C. What we're going to add in here to the exception shapes is a hand with three hearts and three spades. So we've got four spades and four hearts, four spades and three hearts, three spades and four hearts, or three spades and three hearts. What we're going to want to do is to look at this hand to see if we want to open one club or one diamond because we have a high probability of finding a major suit fit if our partner has a four card major or even better, a five card major. All right. So again, we want to make sure we're strong enough to at least open our mouth. So we want the two, three, four results to be greater than equal to one. Okay, now instead of two quick tricks, we still want to have some element of strength. So we're going to shade it a half a quick trick. So if we've got one and a half quick tricks, we're going to consider opening. Now we're going to use, we'll lower the number of, uh, of high card points, the adjusted high card points down to 10. Okay, so the range is 10 to 11 high card points, but we're going to want to consider to do, open these exception means. Okay, now, so remember that the number one rule in bidding is you have to have a plan second bid, okay? Now, since our partner is already passed, indicating that they couldn't open, one of our plan second bids can be a pass, where in first and second C, if our partner bids something, a new suit pass is not an option. So remember, pass is an option after you open in third seat. So let's see what we've got here. We open a club and our partner in third seat and our partner says a diamond, what's that says? They've got four plus diamonds, okay? They may or may not have a four card major. Okay, it depends on what your agreement is with your partner, okay? Uh, and we'll get into some of those things in the later courses as it relates to Walsh, modified Walsh, forcing, X, Y, Z, some of these other things that have an effect here. Okay, but one club, one diamond, okay, uh, your partner said they've got four plus diamonds. Well, if you've got opened an exception, okay, with any of these major suit strengths, and you've got three plus diamonds, what do you know? You know that you've got four plus diamonds. You know you've only got 10 to 11 points. Your partner probably only has 10 to 11 points. So what do you want to do is you want to pass and, 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 and retreat so you can fight another day, okay? You don't need to go any further. One diamond is a perfectly acceptable contract. And let's see what happens. If the opponents come into the auction, what do you got? You've got a bunch of, you've got at least three cards in every one of the majors. You may have a good opportunity to set them. It's amazing how many times the auction goes pass, pass, one, di uh, one club, pass, one diamond and it gets passed out because everybody's got uh, somewhere in the range of nine to 11 points, no real suit. You just found a moisy and fit in the diamond suit. You make, you make one diamond, you get a plus four of 70 and you get a top board. Okay, if you don't have three plus diamonds, okay, if your partner bid one heart, okay, if, if, if your partner, okay, if your partner bid one diamond, if you don't have three plus diamonds, if you've got four hearts and four spades, or four hearts and three spades, you're going to bid one heart. Or with three hearts, three spades. And that's says, hey, partner, I've got at least three plus hearts. What do you got? If your partner's got a fit in hearts, they're either going to raise you or they're going to pass. If they don't have that, they have four spades, they're going to bid four spades, one spade. Okay, so if you've got one spade, you're going to bid one spade. If you've got four spades and three hearts. Okay, you can see how this relates, this, this sequence relates to your open versus the, the responders uh, response. Okay, if, your part, if you open one club or one diamond and your partner bids a heart, 
If you've got only three hearts, you're going to pass. Hey, you've got a four, three, fit, at least a four, three, fit. You've got four hearts, you can raise the two hearts. Now you know you've got at least a four, four, fit. Okay, because you know your partner's going to bid a diamond if they don't have four hearts or four spades, and they have four plus diamonds. Okay, and the same is true with respect to spades. Okay, now if your partner bids one no trump, okay, if you've got less than or equal to 15 points, here's where it gets a little bit shaky. You're going to pass. You may end up being in one no trump with only 18 or 19 points between you. Sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. You don't get the, 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 you know, you can't always have a positive answer. You're going to roll the dice. Okay. And most of the time, probably five out of six times, it's going to work out fine for you. Okay. If you've got 16 plus high card points, you're going to want to explore the game. Okay. Your partners come back and you've got 16. Your partner could have 10 or 11. You have plenty of points per game. Three no or, 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 or in one or in, in three no. Now, there are additional things that can be used to help clarify this uh, in terms of conventions. There's new minor forcing, there's XYZ. XYZ is really new minor forcing on, on steroids. We'll talk about those in later lessons. Okay, now we're going to talk about some pretty unique opening bids in third seat. I didn't say fourth, I said third. Okay, one is the third seat lead directly open. Okay. Uh, it, some of you may say, well, this is a site bid. No, it is not a site bid. This is a tactical bid that tells your partner that you want them to lead that suit if they have the opening lead. So if you have the ace king or the ace queen in clubs or diamonds and cannot open, you and you feel confident the fourth seat is going to open, the purpose is to tell your partner what to leave. Open one club or one diamond and then pass forever. It says, hey, partner, I'm waving the flag here. Oh, leave the suit that I, that, that I bid. Now, this does not apply to the majors. You do not use lead directing opens for the majors. Okay, that will get you in all sorts of troubles because when you open a major, you're promising five plus, and you say, hey, can we make game? When you open a minor, you're saying, hey, we don't know where we're going. We're going to meander down this path, and we'll see what we can find. So you can use that path you're on to, uh, uh, in, in kind of a bastardized manner, to open a minor in this situation and tell your partner what to lead. Okay, let's look at an example here, okay? It's past past two. You guys are vulnerable. The opponents aren't vulnerable. So let's look at the characteristics of this. Your two, three, four here is you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine losers. Ugh, what an ugly hand. Okay, so you got seven minus nine plus two vulnerability factors. So it says zero. It says you can't open anything. All right, yeah, I know I can't open anything. Okay. Uh, high card points. What do you got? You've got eight minus two. Both neither one of these jacks are guarded, so you've only got six high card points. With respect to the rule of 20, what do you got? <coughs> well, you got six high card points plus four plus three gets you all the way up to 13. That's really close to 20, ain't it? Huh? How about the rule of 15? Not even close. Okay, so it's the answers are no and two, three, four, no in high card points, no in terms of quick tricks, no in terms of rule of 20, and no in terms of the rule of 15. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna open one diamond. <laughs> you say, what? This makes no sense because you had five criteria and all of them were no, and you're telling me to open a diamond? Yeah, I'm telling you to open the diamond because the opponent's going to get the contract more than likely, because in the suit that the fourth seat suit opens, and you want to tell your partner to lead a diamond. The only way you're going to do that, because you're not allowed to kick your partner under the table, is to bid a diamond right now. That's called a lead directing open. Once you bid that diamond, no matter what your partner says, you're going to pass. Okay, so the message is going to be perfectly clear to your partner. You want a freaking diamond leap. Okay. Now, let's talk about the third CD and its obstructive capabilities. Now, this is really is a psych bid. 
Okay, uh, and uh, just as an aside, psychs are part of the game. Okay, I don't care if you like them or don't like them. They are part of the game. Okay, uh, some local clubs ban them. Then you go to a tournament where they cannot be banned. And the guy psychs and you get screwed to the wall and you bitch and bitch and bitch because he psyched. Okay, if you don't learn how to recognize a psych and how to handle a psych, you're going to get nailed to the wall at a tournament sometime. Okay, so let's just talk about this. Okay, you're in third seat. The first and second seat have passed, and you don't have crap. You've got less than or equal to four length points. So if you've got less than or equal to four point length points, how many points does the fourth seat have? 16 plus. They're going to open one no trump, or they're going to open a minor, then jump to two no trump. They're going to open two clubs. They're going to open something. You know they're going to open. So what can you do? You can find a bid, any bid, to obstruct and confuse the opponents. Okay? That is a psych bid. Okay, let's look at this hand. In this one, we've got a B factor of four. We're vulnerable. They're not vulnerable. We've got our two, three, four comes out to one. Hey, that's actually pretty good for this hand. It's a really, really crappy hand, but coming out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, if I got that wrong, I'll have to fix it on the handout. We got eleven. It actually says we're at zero. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. That looks like a really crappy hand. Okay. Our high card points adjusted is zero. Maybe we'll get all zeros here. Our rule of 20 result is eight. And our rule of 15 is two. Okay. You can't get a hand that is much worse than this. You know that the opponents are going to open a club. All right. So what am I suggesting you do? Go crazy. Open one club or preempt three clubs. <laughs> are you going to say, are you totally nuts? Yes, I am totally nuts. I have opened three clubs with a hand like this. And guess what? The opponents, you know, which one is more preemptive? Three clubs or one club? You got to think about this. Okay, actually, one club is more preemptive because the fourth seed opponent is going to go, he just opened one club. He's probably got opening points. This is where the points are. This is how I'm going to have to defend the hand. Guess who doesn't have any freaking points? Me. Okay. So actually, the one club is the better bid than three clubs. Okay. Three clubs, you can mix it up. Okay. But yes, is this a sight? Yes. Is it a natural suit? Yes, you've got four plus cards in that suit. It's a natural bid. Okay. But it is a sight bid. Okay. And I'm not really in favor of psych, bid psych bidding suits that you don't have. You get yourself in all sorts of trouble really, really quickly. I would not open this hand in one space. But I would open it one club. Okay. At least that takes out, takes, um, it does not allow the, the, uh, the opponent to open two clubs or two no trump. Okay. They have to go in. They have to initiate a bidding sequence that's going to be more complicated than what they were planning. All right. Let's take a look at some examples and, and, and a little quiz on third seed. In this first hand here, what we got? Two, three, four results. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got our two, three, four result is two. Okay, so it's greater than equal one. That's one positive. Quick trips. Oh my goodness, we only have a half a quick trip. Okay, even though we've got 13 high card points, we'll get suggested 11. We only have one half of a quick trick. Okay. This is a crappy hand with lots of high card points. Look at the rule of 20. We've got 11 plus 4 plus 4. That's 19. Rule of 15. Uh, I wonder why I didn't put that in there. Okay. It'll probably show up later. Okay. I do not believe this hand has enough to actually open. So I'm going to pass this hand just because it is such a crappy hand. It doesn't even come close to being able to meet the, the having two quick tricks. So it is one that should definitely be passed. Okay, let's look at uh, this second example here. Okay, in terms of two, three, four, this one actually evaluates out and it looks a little bit weaker. 
than its first hand because our 2, 3, 4 resolve is equal to 1. In terms of quick tricks, though, we have two quick tricks. So we know that the second hand is many times more powerful than this first hand because we know we're going to take two tricks. Over here, we don't know crap. And in terms of high card points, we've got a, a 11 high card points. That jack is unguarded, so it goes back down to 10. Okay. Uh, and with respect to the rule of 15, I wonder where the heck my, these things are. They'll show up. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to open this second hand one club because we have a really good opportunity to make, uh, to find a major suit fit. If we open a club and our partner goes one heart, we know that we've got at least seven of them. If our partner goes uh, open, uh, responds one spades, we know we have a four, four fit. So let's look at example number three. Okay, and this one, let's see, what do we got? We've got, whoa, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we're not vulnerable there, so we've got a V factor forces. We can open to the five level. We're going to open the five level. No, it just says we can safely open at the one level. Quick tricks. Look at this. We've got three quick tricks: one, two for the the ace king of hearts, a half for each one of these kings. High card points. We've got thirteen. Rule of twenty. We've got thirteen plus four plus four is equal to twenty-one. Boy, we've got a great hand here. Okay. Ah, there they come. All right. Okay. Rule of 15. We've got 13 plus 1 equals 14. Do we want to open this third hand? No, we do not. Okay. The opponents obviously are going to have more than likely 90% have a fit in spades. Okay. And we don't want to provide any encouragement to that fourth seat player to overcall a one club or one diamond open. We want him or her to make that decision on their own. If they're sitting there with 10 points, a marginal hand, five spades, likely, the likelihood is they are going to pass. And if they pass, the hand gets passed out, you get a zero score. Now, if you open a club or a diamond, they overcall a spade, the, the, the partner of the overcaller, Bids two spades, they make two spades, you get a minus score of 110. So this is a really, really great example where you don't want to open as a means of controlling the auction and putting the burden of responsibility on the fourth seed player. You don't want to invite them to make a weak overcall. Okay, let's look at the fourth seed. Okay, and, and the, four, the example. Fourth example, okay, here we've got another pretty crappy hand, but let's look at this. Two, three, four result is a minus one. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard. It's hard to get below zero, but we've, we've succeeded with this hand. Okay, quick tricks, we got one and a half. Hey, that's pretty good. It was much stronger than that first example we had on the previous page. Okay, high card points, well, we had seven, but we have to adjust it down to six. Rule of 20, well, we can get all the way up to 13. That's really close to 20. And in terms of the rule of 15, we'll see that later. It's not going to be anywhere close to 15. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Well, we know that the four seat opponent is going to open. Okay, we want to get in there and scream and yell and tell our partner that we want a diamond lead. So what are we going to do? We're going to open one diamond. That's a lead directing open. Okay, we're never going to bid anything else but pass again. Okay, so our partner, when they're in the opening lead, if they don't lead a diamond, I suggest you get a new, new partner. Okay, because, and hopefully, the king is to your right, and you get two tricks immediately, okay? Uh, because you don't have anything else. You have no other hope, okay? And you want to get some information from your partner, hopefully from signals that will tell you what to lead back, okay? So that you can actually double dip and get them to get, do a double whammy to the opponents. All right, let's look at this last one, this example number five. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty, pretty bad hand. We've got 12 losers. That's hard to do. 
Now, that's the, we're, we don't even have a true Yarborough here because we've got two tens. Without, you know, to have a true Yarborough, you're not even allowed to have a 10. Okay, so we've got 7 minus 12 plus 3. We've got vulnerable versus vulnerable. Okay, so we're at a minus 2. <laughs> Quick tricks, we don't have any. Points, we don't have any. Rule of 20, we can only get to, uh, again, if we go to rule of 20, we can only get to 7. 7. Okay, but what are we going to do? We're going to open one club or one dime. Do we ever intend on bidding again? No, if you really want to screw them up, you'll rebid your suit later on, if you can do so at the two level. However, you want to just throw that bid in. It's totally meaningless, doesn't tell your partner anything. They get in the opening lead, they leave your suit. Doesn't make any difference because you don't have crap anyways. Okay. What you've done is you've confused the opponent. Well, by the way, you've also confused your partner, but it's worth trying to get in there and mix it up a little bit. So on this particular hand, I would open one club. Okay, I like to open at the lowest possible level if I'm going to do a site, just to provide my partner the opportunity to say something, okay, if they have something, okay? And that way I can kind of minimize the damage if my partner goes nuts. Okay, let's look at this sixth example here. Here we've got, oh, it looks like a pretty good hand. Okay, two, three, four, we've got seven losers. It says we can safely open to the four level. So we can safely open this hand. Two and a half quick tricks. Hey, we got a powerhouse. High card points, we've got 10 minus uh, zero. Everything's guarded. And the rule of 20, well, we only get to 18. Oh, well, we can get to 20. I guess we can't open. Well, let's look at the rule of 15. Okay, and rule 15, we got close with 14. Now, however, because we've got four hearts and four spades, what's the likelihood that we have a 4-4 four, four bid in one of the majors? Pretty good. Okay, now, we can go ahead, open this hand. One club is one of the exceptions hands because we've got four hearts and four spades. So let's assume that we do that. Now our, right hand, our left hand opponent bids one spade. <laughs> Are we unhappy? No. Why? Because we've got four spades. Okay, so what not only have we done is it, and let's say our, our, our right hand opponent, our left hand opponent open, over calls a heart and our partner goes one spade. Oh, our partner bids one spade. They've got five spades. If they double the one heart, we'd have no, they had four. Hey, we just found a bet. Okay, now we can force them to go all the way to the two level, maybe even the three level. You've got four spades to bend with. There are no downsides to using this approach of, 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 of exceptions uh, in third C. Now, let's talk about fourth C. Okay, the fourth C is very, very different than the third C. <laughs> you go, well, how, it's only one chair. How much of a difference can it make? Well, remember that both you and your, uh, your partner and both opponents have passed. Okay, now remember the, the primary goal of every handed bid is get the best possible score. Has nothing to do with getting to the right contract or making over trick, it's to get the best possible score. Okay, and in this situation, you know, remember zero is better than a negative score. Okay, if the hand gets passed out and you plan duplicate, you get a zero. If the hand, if you open your mouth, and the opponents take the bid and make it, let's say two spades, you get a minus 110. Okay, zero is better than a negative score. Okay, that's the way numbers work. Okay, the goals, you know, the same goals that we've had before. And again, we want to control the auction. Now we're going to control the auction differently than we did with respect the third C, because one of the things that we can do to control the auction is to pass. Okay, if we pass, the auction is over and we have absolute control. Okay, so the only time we want to open in fourth seat is when we know we want to open, or we think we have a really good chance of controlling the auction with a marginal hand. 
So the basic criteria are going to be the same. Two, three, four, greater than one. Meet the rule of 22. Meet the rule of 15 with two quick tricks. Remember, we're talking about opening one club or one diamond, not one of the majors. We're talking about the minors. Okay. And the rule of 15, again, is to control the auction. Okay. So these are really important aspects. Okay. So now let's take a look at an example in the third seat. Okay. In this first one, what we got, we've got two, three, four, uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight losers. So it says, hey, we've got our result is one. We're strong enough to open if the other uh, uh, criteria are met. Our high card points, we've got 13 minus one for that stupid unguarded jack of heart. That gives us 12. Okay, the rule of 20, hey, we actually get to 20. 12 plus five plus three. We meet that. Okay, and with the rule of 15, we've got 12 plus three spades. Uh, hey, we meet all the criteria. Okay, when we meet all the criteria, it's a pretty much of a no-brainer that we want to open. So yes, we're going to open this hand one diamond. Okay, because not only we've got uh, we, we've got reasonable control of the spade suit, we've got a reasonably strong hand, the nice hand. Okay, you don't want to pass this down. Okay. okay. I had to kill the phone. All right, let's see the exact second example here. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven losers. It's actually from a two, three, four standpoint, this hand is stronger. So if we could open safely the two of them. Okay, with high card points, we've got 12. Okay, it's the same as the previous hand. Okay, with respect to the, the rule of 20, comes out to 21. So if this is better. This is just as good. This is better. Now let's look at the rule of 15. Okay, the rule of 15, we've got 12 high card points. Only got one spade. Okay, comes out to 13. Do we want to open this hand? No, we do not. We know that if we open this hand, a diamond or, or, or what if we're going to open a diamond that this silly opponent sitting to our left is going to be overcall one spade. Do we want to give that opponent that opportunity to find a spade suit fit and make one spade, two spades, or even three spades? No way. So we want to control the auction. We're going to control the auction by passing. Okay. Remember, for C, you want to be able to control the auction. And that includes passing. All right. Now let's look at the exceptions. Now remember, there are exceptions in first and second seat. There's exceptions on third seat. Okay. And there are also exceptions on the fourth seat. Now, first seat looked pretty aggressive. Third seat was more aggressive. Fourth seat is going to be more conservative. Okay. What do you mean? Instead of having uh, allowing you to do it with four hearts and three spades. We're only going to do this with four spades and four hearts or four spades and three hearts. Okay, what does that kind of Im imply to you? So you want to be able to control the master suit of spades. Okay, we have a pretty good feeling about being able to control the spades. Okay, so again, we have result greater than equal to one. We're going to have one and a half quick tricks. Remember, two is the normal requirement, but we're going to hedge that down to one and a half if we've got four hearts, four spades and four hearts, or four spades and three hearts, and not two hearts, want to have both majors, okay? 10 to 11, just the high card points, okay? Now, remember, it's dependent on what we're, our, our plan second bid is. And because we're in third seat pass was an option, in fourth seat pass is an option. So let's take a quick look at this. If we open a club and our partner goes a diamond, we've got three plus diamonds, we're going to pass. If the, we open a club and our partner bids a heart and we've got, uh, and if we have four hearts, four spades and four hearts, uh, we're, we're, we're going to uh, bid, uh, we're going, we're, we're, I wonder why I've got, I've, I've got that screwed up. Uh, I'm going to have to fix that and that'll be in the handout. But in, in these cases, if your partner bids one heart, uh, and you have the exception hand, you're going to pass with three. If your partner bids one spade, you're going to bid two spades. It's going to show up later, I know. 
they, uh, or maybe not, but I'll have, if they're not, I'll have to fix it later. If they've been, uh, oh, oh, if it was one club, they bid one heart. No, that's still the same. Okay, now if they, it was one club, one diamond, one heart, with three, you're going to pass. It's, it's, these really uh, is, is the same down here. I'll have to fix that. Okay, and uh, if a bit of spade, you can bid two spades with four spades. Okay, so you know, you got a four, four bid. You know, so you still have the same options of being able to explore three no trump with greater than equal to, to 69 card points. All right, now let's look at some examples here, and then we're going to call it a day. Okay, and, and these are pretty much the same examples as before, except we're in four C, not third C. Okay, and the, remember, our we have to layer on here controlling the auction from the fourth seat perspective. Okay, in terms of uh, the two, three, four resolve his hands, two quick tricks, we still only have one half quick trick in this hand. Okay, and we still have 11 high cards in the point, 19. What we're going to do is we're going to pass on this hand. Okay, uh, the, we're not going to move meet the rule of 15 here either. Well, actually, we are. We've got, we're going to have 11 plus four is equal to 15. Now, even though we meet the, the rule of 15, let's go ahead and just fill this out so we can discuss it with everything here. Even though we meet the rule of 15, we didn't meet the rule of 20, and we absolutely did not meet the, the requirement to have two quick tricks. So we're going to pass this. In. Let's look at the second example. here. In this one here, we've got uh, our, our two, three, four result is one. Hey, that's good enough. Okay. Uh, we have two quick tricks. Hey. Hey, cool. We've got 11 high card points minus one. So we got 10 high card points. Now, from the standpoint of rule of 20, we're only around 17. Okay, you would like that to be around 18, but that's uh, 17. Remember, the bridge is a game of judgment. And there are only absolute rule in, in bridge is there are no absolute rules. Okay, and, uh, and we're close with respect to the rule of 15 also. So. Now, because we've got four spades and three hearts, okay, we can open this hand one club as an exception hand because we've got a good chance of controlling the auction, probably 60, 40, maybe 70, 30. Okay, so seven times out of 10, this is going to work for you. Okay, that's, those are pretty good odds. You can take those to, to the casino with you. Okay, with the third example here, the two, three, four comes out to three. We've got three quick tricks, one and a half. Well, we don't have three, think three quick tricks. We've got two and a half. We'll have to fix that. Okay, we still have 10 high card points. We've got 10 plus four is equal to 18. We've got 10 plus three, 13. We don't meet these other criteria. Now, we've got four hearts and three spades. Now, do we want to use this as an exception hand? No, because we don't have the ability to control the spade three. We're not close. Okay, so we only want to use this in four seats with about four spades and three hearts, or four spades and four hearts. So we're going to pass the third hand. Okay, with this next one, we've got, uh, again, it's <coughs> it is a pretty crappy hand. Okay, we're going to come down here and fill this whole thing in. Okay, this is the same hand we had with third seat. Okay, we've got that ace, queen of diamonds. Do we want to wave our hands and say, hey, partner, if you get in the lead, lead a diamond? No, we want to exercise our absolute control of the auction by passing. We don't want the auction, the, the opponents getting in it ever. Okay, now, if you only got seven, seven high card points and there's 40 in the deck, that means there's 33 outstanding. It says they're even, they're probably evenly distributed, 11, 11, 11, or somebody screwed up. Okay, and hopefully it wasn't your partner, but you want to pass this hand out because zero is probably the best score you're going to ever get on it. Okay, and the second hand here, okay, this is what I call a dirty carry hand. Okay, you remember the Dirty Harry movie? Dirty Harry looks at the, the bad guy and says, okay, punk, you feeling lucky today? Well, it's, are you feeling lucky today? Do you need a good score? Okay, this is a real borderline hand. Okay, we've got four spades. We've got three hearts. We've got two quick tricks. We've got 10 high card points. We're right on the edge of meeting the rule of 15. If you need a good score, if you're feeling really lucky, Go ahead and open this hand one club. 
if you think you're ahead and you don't need a good score, pass. Okay. And remember, this is a game that combines the results or the scores you make on all those hands, and you've got to play what you, where you think you are in the overall match. Okay. It uh, doesn't do any good for you to pass this hand if you're behind in points and you need a good score. This might be the opportunity to get one. Okay, let's look at the fourth thing, the, six, uh, the, the example number six. Okay, uh, I think we've seen something like this before. Okay, and in fourth seat, you know, we look at it, it comes out to 18, comes out to 14. We're close in all of these. Okay, I'm going to open this hand one club as an exception hand because I've got four hearts and four spades. The odds are really, really strong, probably at least 80% that we're going to find a major suit fit. We're going to be able to play this contract at the one or the two level. Okay, so uh, when I've got odds like that, I want to take advantage of. Okay, so that, that concludes uh, the, the lesson on opening a minor suit on the third, in third or fourth seat. Okay, recognize that opening a minor suit in the first and second seat is definitely different than opening a minor suit in the third seat and different from opening a minor suit in the fourth seat. One club is not equal to one club is not equal to one club. So you have to be able to apply these criteria to the seat because of the amount of information that's available to you. Okay. And also to achieve the goals and objectives that, 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 that you want. And remember, the primary goal here is to get the best score. Okay, not to make the contract, it's to get the best score. Sometimes you do that by confusing the opponents. Ergo, that's why the psych bid exists. Okay, and if you don't practice it, I guarantee you won't be able to recognize it and handle it when you run into it or your opponents throw one at you. So, uh, don't. Uh, because they're not going to change the rules, okay? And I guarantee you'll run into it sometime when you go to a tournament. All right, so have a great day.